All right, now we're to the point where we've got everything clean. Here's your inner sleeve. And this is the piece that is going to be going between both bearings. Obviously, we've got our bearings at the ready. We have thoroughly cleaned the shaft, the spindle, including pulling this thin thrust washer off and cleaning underneath. And there's another thrust washer underneath it. Sorry. There's another thrust washer underneath of that. Okay, that is the stack up. The small diameter thrust washer first, and then the large diameter. Really, really thin, probably only 15 thousandths. One underneath it might be 40, but as long as you've got the stack up the same, you're gonna be fine, okay? Then we have the housing itself, which we have cleaned out. Now you'll notice there's no shoulder on this side. I did it again. You'll notice there's no shoulder on this side, but you flip it around and there's an inner shoulder. You see that? That comes out. Make sure that goes back in. That allows, it, it, it's just another thrust washer that keeps everything aligned the way that it needs to be aligned. Now how do we press in the bearings? Well, do one bearing at a time, doesn't matter which side you do. And I suggest, just a suggestion, some of you have, some of you don't. Get a really big socket. Take that really big socket, as large a diameter as you have, to get as close to the size of the outer race of the bearing as you can get. Okay, I'm really close to the size of the outer race of that bearing. Doesn't matter which way you set your bearing in, they're sealed on both sides. I like to use a little bit of die maker's grease just to make things go in a little bit easier. And it's hard telling how old this tube is. It's ancient. But get yourself a little bit of die maker's grease. In fact, it's so hard I had to I had to start carving on it in order to get <laughs> in order to start getting some. Again, make sure everything is clean. I'm just going to scrape a little bit of this die maker's grease out, just like that. And that's exactly what it's designed for. It's to help assemble. Just a really thin layer on the bearing. And don't worry, your bearing is not going to slip out of place using this stuff. This is what it's made for. We'll just go around. Just a smattering of it, doesn't have to be a lot. In fact, I've got more than enough on here to do both bearings. So, And if you don't have die maker's grease, use a little bit of lithium grease. Just use something that's going to help that seat into place. Um, once it's all together, it's all bolted together. It's not going to come apart on you. Take the bearing and as well as you can Squared up. I'm on a I'm on a hard surface. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly tap with a small hammer just to get it started. And you can see I'm moving the socket around. It's going in just fine. Now that's one way to get them in. Another way to get them in, if you have a big enough vise, is open up your vise. Woo! Good catch, Zippo. Open up your vise enough for the socket to go in front. Hold it all in one place, just like that. 
and start tightening down your vise. The diameter of the socket is going to be small enough and everything is held square enough that you should be able to just do that. Press that bearing right home until it stops. That is one bearing in. Just that easy. Alright, let's crank this sucker in a little bit so I've got some place to sit that. See, I knew if I didn't put my gloves on I was going to end up getting all nasty dirty, so bear with me for just a second because them gloves are going on. Gloves. I know it doesn't bother me to get my hands dirty. Just when I'm dealing with grease and stuff like that, that's a bit that's a bit much. We'll get another one that's already out of the wrapper here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, good. I have a deck to rebuild and I didn't want to use. If I only had six bearings, I didn't want to do this. So again, same thing here. Just spread that die maker's grease on. Doesn't have to be a lot at all. Where are we at? Six minutes? Not bad. Okay. Doesn't matter which way you put it. And I always just stick my finger in there so I can get, get it kind of, sort of, kind of lined up. That one actually wanted to fall down in there just a little bit, which helps me out a lot. Okay. Yeah, you can either do that method of hammering it around like I was doing, or put it in the vise and drive it home. This one's going to sink down a little bit deeper. But you guys notice what I forgot? I did it on purpose because you guys are going to do it too. You're going to be in a hurry to get the bearings in. Don't forget your spacer. You've got to put that spacer. Just drop it in there doesn't have to be lined up just drop it in there now you're ready to press that bearing home so remember that spacer I can't tell you how many times I've rebuilt these things and I forgot the spacer and had to pop a bearing back out it's frustrating so we're just going to drive this one home the way I did the first one there say that one's going to go down a little deeper because you don't have that inner race that's going to hold the bearing. It's going to stick out a little bit on the bottom. It's going to recess a little bit on the top. Now you are ready for your final assembly. It's just the reverse of the way that everything was before. So put your finger in there and just kind of line up that spacer in there. Come on little spacer. Activity goal achieved. Yep, it's going. And just drive it home. Make sure you've got your stack up down here. And make sure also that you're putting the shaft in the right way. Spinning nice, spinning nice. Then, just finish putting it together. You've got your stack up over here, just the way that things were. So you've got your two thrust washers. Thrust washers in. Then you've got your washer. Washer in. And you've got your drift key. We had on time. Just under 10 minutes. I don't want to scare you. 
Well, don't then. Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to. Too late. Ah! Candy wire. Yeah. Be right back, guys. Okay, something I forgot to mention was before you start drawing this pulley off with the pulley, and you, uh, you've got a set screw. It's a 532nd set screw. So you want to loosen that up. Some of them have them, some of them don't. So you do want to check the groove to see if you have a set screw in your pulley. So, now, we've got our assembly complete. And we're going to get ready to put her back together. Okay, gang, sorry for the interruption. So, now, we've got everything together the way that it was. And it is time to put the finishing touches on it, which is... Putting the drift key in, which we've got right here, and I typically just tap the drift keys into place. You want to make sure it's good and clean and clear. I'm going to touch it up just a little bit. Hang on, guys. Now, I was not, I didn't touch up the sides. All I did was just face it right here just a little bit. Had a little bit of a booger on it. So, set your drift key in place. Now, if you have a new drift key, use a new drift key. If you don't have a new drift key, obviously, and, and, your, and your old one is in good enough shape, use it. Now, you've got the bottom where the blade goes on, on a rigid surface, so that you can get your pulley driven down. And it's got a little bit of dirt in it. Let me clean that out. I'll probably just blow it out. Okay. Make sure you're clean in here. And you will note that you'll have a spot where the nut made contact. So the opposite side goes down. And you can use that same socket to drive it home. I know, don't hammer sockets. Well, these are cheap, generic, sockets so I am not worried about it and I'm not putting a lot of force on it so I'm just using a little dinky hammer. Use the right tool for, <laughs> right tool for the job which is whatever you have on hand right. You only need it down far enough so you can get your threads on so you can start your threads. Get her started. Got a booger somewhere. Last thing you want to do is cross thread one of these things, especially on your center spindle. I think we're good. Yep, we're good. Just tighten her down. And you want to tighten it pretty good. You'll note when you took it off, it was on there pretty tight. You want to make sure you're pretty tight again going back together. And as you do that, it's going to draw the pulley down to where it needs to be. It'll hit the stop, which will be against the bearing, which will compress that center spacer and further seat your bearings in the event you didn't get them completely seated. So go until it gets tight. There we got tight. And that, folks, is how you rebuild a spindle. Gorgeous. I think I'll actually use that on my 42 inch deck that is in dire need of bearings. But there you have it, guys.
that is how you rebuild. Now that sound that you're hearing is just that really thin thrust washer under there making that noise. But there you go. As long as your stack up is identical, going back together as it is coming apart, it's essentially just a matter of disassembly, making sure you remember that center tube, getting your bearings pressed in squarely, and making sure everything's clean when it goes back together. It doesn't have to be butamous. I didn't clean the groove of the pulley or you know, I didn't clean areas that weren't necessary to clean. But that spindle ought to be good for another 50 years. There you go, guys. This is your friendly neighborhood Zippo. Again, I'm sorry it took so long to get this video out there. It's been on my request list for a while. I just haven't had the time to do it. It is Sunday, March 9th, and I have not been bothered but once today. Yesterday was crazy. Today, not so much. So, you guys got a how-to video. Hope you enjoyed the series. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And believe me, I will be on the next video. I promise. And Zippo later. I'm out of here. I'll throw this in somewhere in all the video clips that I've got. Uh, this is what would be a center spindle. And this is the one I just rebuilt. I painted it just to let me know that I rebuilt it. But if I needed a center spindle, and I knew that I had this rebuilt, all I've got to do is take all this off, drop that out, and put this one in. Of course, not with the bearing. But I would also have to make sure that I spaced it and gapped it right so that I wasn't uh, going to be binding the bearings. But you can use any of these spindle housings with the center spindle. So if you have a wore out center spindle, you can use any of them. Some of them have three holes, some of them have six holes, doesn't matter. Dimensionally, they are all the same. So, that's it. It'll be in, I'll probably throw it in somewhere odd. Just because I am a little odd. Alright, that's it. Let's zip it later. Mouth.